This is More Than Construction, a journey group podcast about building community. Hello, and welcome back to More Than Construction. I'm Nathan Walter. Journey Group is a construction company whose mission is to positively impact lives by building community. But we recognize that building community doesn't always involve construction in the traditional sense of the word. Sometimes building community involves pre-construction, sometimes it involves deconstruction and demolition, and sometimes it involves repair and restoration. That's why this podcast is called More Than Construction, because our aim is to highlight the aspects of our company that build community in unique or less obvious ways. And today's episode is a great example of that. I've got a couple team members from Blacktop Paving here with me. Blacktop Paving is our horizontal construction division. You can learn all about them in episode four of this podcast. And today we're going to talk about an aspect of Blacktop Paving that not enough people in our community know about. One of those unique, more than construction services that really flies under the radar and yet is so crucial to our mission of building community and that is in the realm of repairs and restorations. So Blacktop has its own specializations. There's an asphalt department, there's concrete, there's prep work, but then there's also the maintenance department. And we have joining us two leaders from our maintenance department, Matt Undercheck, project manager, and Malachi Furman, the asphalt maintenance superintendent. Thank you for joining us. I'm excited to talk about maintenance with you guys today. Thanks for having us. We're excited. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I am looking forward to this. So Matt, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got to where you are today as a project manager for Blacktop Paving. Yeah, so in college, I took a class that helped you pick your major and saw there's a high job placement rate in construction management and I said, okay, let's go with it. I worked in asphalt labor position for a year throughout college with the asphalt company out of Huron. And then just kind of gained a liking for construction throughout college. And my first job was actually in vertical construction. I worked out in Denver for a year for a commercial builder there. Went through about one commercial construction punch list and I realized <laughs> not for me. Um, ended up calling Ryan and getting a hold of Journey and Blacktop specifically and got hired on. So I've been with Blacktop for five years now. Started as a project engineer, went to uh, project manager now. And actually Malachi is probably one of the first superintendents I actually worked with. He wasn't nice. superintendent yet. He was our maintenance foreman and I wasn't a project manager, but maintenance is a little easier to manage and it's a lot less can go wrong, I feel like. So uh, <laughs> the new guy got kind of put in charge of that. So I've worked with Malachi a lot over the last five years. So Nice. Nice. That's cool. And Malachi, you're no longer the maintenance foreman. You're the maintenance right. superintendent. So congrats on that promotion. That was fairly recently, right? Yeah, just last year. So thank yeah, you. awesome. So tell us about how you got to this point in the company and why you're so passionate about maintenance. So I'm 28 years young. I went to high school in Webster, went to college for a short stint after that at Lake Erie Tech. Didn't really know what I wanted to get into. Turns out college wasn't for me. So I worked a few odds and ends jobs in the meantime and then kind of just stumbled my way into asphalt about eight, nine years ago now. Yeah. Worked for two to three years at another company in the area. And then I had a family member working for Blacktop at the time. Nice. And he had all these great things to say and told me I should come over and kind of see what we're doing here. So I uh, reached out, got an interview and got hired, I think the next day. Nice. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I've been off to the races since then. Started out in more of a operator's position. We didn't really have a maintenance program at the time. We mm. were kind of just getting into the crack sealing realm of things. Me and, and one other person kind of went out and did crack sealing just as like a part-time gig and then helped out on the other crews as necessary. And then I think each year, from that point on, we've kind of just grown it into what it is today. So yeah, that's really cool. Let's talk about the maintenance department within Blacktop Paving. Give us a general overview. What does that encompass? I think people generally understand the idea of maintenance, 
but specifically talking about what blacktop paving does, what does that entail? Yeah, so I would consider maintenance anything you do to your parking lot to further the life of the parking lot. The whole point is to keep moisture from the bottom of your asphalt parking lot. So you get these cracks in your lot. Asphalt's a flexible pavement. It's going to move throughout the weather. So in order to do that, it's going to crack at times. You know, concrete, you put joints into it. Asphalt, you don't. Yeah. So it's going to crack along its own spots. And in order to keep moisture from running in there, you got to seal those cracks every year or two to keep everything out so your asphalt can stay good. Good maintenance program extends the life of a parking lot countless amounts of years. Yeah. Uh, we do crack seal, mastic, which mastic is fairly new, similar to crack seal, where it's flexible and it's got rubber in it to uh, seal up the cracks and not let moisture in, but it's also got aggregate. So there's a stability to it and leveling aspect. Huh. So any of those wider cracks where they start to alligator, mastic is perfect for that. So we have crack seal, mastic. We got into seal coat just last year. Yep. So we provide that now as well as striping. So nice. kind of the whole gambit. Malachi will also do any smaller patches. Yeah. I think the goal originally was to be a one-stop shop. I think that was Ryan and Brad's goal when they started you know, increasing our workload and acquiring more work was we want people to just come to us and say, fix my lot to whatever it needs to be and we yeah. can do every scope they need. Yeah. 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 And to touch on what Matt was saying, we used to sub a lot of this work out, mm-hmm. but when I came on board, we were kind of trying to figure it out on our own. And yeah. then, you know, the mastic and the seal coating, that kind of stuff, we had another contractor that we were subbing that out to, but we were still offering that option to our customers. And then as the years went on and we showed that we could perform this on our own, we kind of took on those extra roles. So, I mean, how great for a client to just be able to be like, I don't even necessarily know what I need, but I know my parking lot is in bad shape and can you help me? And and we can, you know, and we right. have those services that can totally restore and repair a lot. I think that's cool. So Malachi, can you give us some examples of how these services are being used out in the field? What problems are people bringing to you and saying, hey, we need help with this getting fixed? So for the most part, obviously new constructed parking lots are pretty expensive and not everybody has that in their budget every year to continuously do these, you know, every five years. Yeah. So what maintenance is, is we pretty much come in and try to alleviate some of the ongoing issues every two to three years and try to get some longevity, like Matt said earlier. So then when it does become time for that major overlay or new constructed parking lot, it might be 20, 30 years down the road yeah. versus every five years wow. you're spending thousands and thousands of dollars, if not more, to repair your parking lot. But not only do we do asphalt maintenance, but we're also maintaining concrete. But yeah. we kind of give that impression that it's asphalt maintenance because, like you said earlier, not everybody knows what maintenance is. Exactly. Most times, even in our in our recruiting efforts, we get people that are like, oh, so you service equipment. You know, that's what they assume when they think of maintenance. Yeah. So we kind of put the asphalt in front of the maintenance to (laughs) kind of give that impression of this is what we're doing. But we also, like I said, service concrete. Whereas, you know, he talked about the joints in concrete. We come through and widen out those joints and fill those in with the crack seal material as well to prevent that water from getting underneath the concrete itself. So yeah, that's cool. I think one of my favorite projects projects of yours to photograph was out at the USD campus in Sioux Falls where they had these three lots that were in three different stages of disrepair. One needed very minimal maintenance, one kind of needed more, and one needed a lot of maintenance. And so you could see this progression of crack sealing and then crack sealing, but a lot of mastic involved too. And then one was just a total overlay and then you striped them all. And it was just such a neat example of the full scope of yeah. what you guys do. And yeah, that was actually one of our more favorite projects because like you said, we got to start in one area and start start the crack sealing process because there's a process to everything. It's not just we're going to come in and we'll start seal coating here and then we'll crack seal later. (laughs) There's a process step by step for everything that we do. So when we come in, we generally route and clean and then crack seal the parking lot. Well, once you get out of one section and you have another section open, we generally like to push guys into that next section and kind of work like a chain. Yeah. And then we come in and do our mastic and our seal coat. And then as the seal coat cures, we come back and restripe that area. So yeah. yeah, having the drone out there was pretty cool to kind of see the progression of all that and kind of let our clients know what the process actually is versus just telling them we can show them visually what we're doing. So yeah. now we have some cool pictures in our office. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> new office, new pictures. That's great. So you've kind of already touched on this, but I, I want to hit on it 
more specifically, why does maintenance matter so much to the community? I think people don't realize the accessibility maybe or the, the ease of maintaining a parking lot, I think. I feel like not a lot of people even consider it as an option that I could inject 10, 15, 20 years of life into my lot by just going to the effort of like, hey, Blacktop, can you take a look at this? Versus like, yeah, yeah, our lot just is in bad shape and we're just gonna tough it out for a couple more years until it's so bad that we have to get it completely gutted and redone. Tell me from you guys' perspective why that option matters so much to our community. Every time I go look at a parking lot, I try to look at it. If I own this parking lot, what am I gonna do? Yeah. And sometimes that might not be the same as what my expert knowledge says we should do. Cause I'm like, <laughs> I understand the cost side of things too. Yeah. And costs are real. The biggest thing I would say is for a fraction of the cost, you can keep the lot's life to lasting longer. I get you got to pay it up front and keep doing it. But instead of paying twenty five, thirty thousand dollars in 10 years, you can extend that $30,000 18 years by spending a couple thousand every few. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. I mean, you got to upkeep on your facilities. They look nicer. People are going to enjoy seeing them. We're trying to save you money in the long run is the biggest thing. And there's times where this lot needs fully replaced, but they're not going to afford that for another five, six years either. So anything you can do is better than nothing. Yeah. That's what yeah. I would say. If you can just crack seal any cracks you can, I mean, that's going to prevent some moisture from falling down there yeah. and making it worse. Yeah. Mastic, same thing. I mean, typically when you're patching, it's anywhere from 40 to $70 a square yard. Mastic is running $4 a linear foot. Yeah. I mean, you're saving a lot of money and it keeps it together longer too. So I just, I think the important part is staying on top of it and knowing that you do have other options instead of just redoing the whole thing or doing big patches. So we try to provide as many options as we can so we can at least do some work for you to help extend the life of your lot. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to touch on that, I don't think that just the physical repairs is all of it. I think some of it can be cosmetic too. Yeah. If you ever look at a parking lot that hasn't been maintained for 10, 15 years, I mean, sometimes I pull up to places and I pull in and I'm like, I don't know if I want to go in here. This place is kind of <laughs> sketchy. Like yeah. nothing seems to be up kept around here, but just the aspect of cosmetically and physically repairing every three to four years is a lot better than waiting 10, 12 years to do something because then your repairs might be double yeah. and there may not be any saving depending on how much damage has been done. So yeah, absolutely. That's such a great point too. I mean, everyone's been in that situation where you drive into a lot and you're like, I think this is a parking spot. Yeah. I can't really tell. You know, yes. like all of that matters to your experience of that business, you know, and yep. all of these things, even the the outside of your building, even your lot says something about who you are as a company and your experience of a business starts not when you enter the door, but starts when you enter the parking lot. Yeah. Just from the curb appeal. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And generally speaking, the parking lot's the first thing you see. Yeah. It's probably the least cared for item you see as well. Absolutely. Yeah. It says a lot yeah. about people when they're seal coating and showing how good their lot can look. I mean, Car lots are infamous for no one. <laughs> Seal coats all the time. Yeah. Make it black, make yep. it pretty. And yeah. Yeah. And yeah, there's a reason for that. The lot is your first and your last impression of a business. So that's such a great point. Yeah. Looking at you guys personally, what to you is the most rewarding part about working in maintenance? I think it's the growth of the team specifically. Our field team is incredible. They started, like I said, with a few guys with a pot and Malachi came on board and he's spearheaded a lot of it. Mm -hmm. See him come in from just an operator to a foreman, now superintendent. Yeah, It's been really cool to see the growth of him and his team. I mean, Cristobal has been great as other foreman. Yeah. He came in as a laborer and he's running stuff by himself now. So, yeah. and growth as the maintenance department, just coming from nothing to now we do dang near every service of work we can offer. And yeah. It's cool to see that in three or four short years. Yeah. Yeah. You know, last night I was laying in bed kind of thinking about the podcast and some of the topics we were going to cover. And I was like, you know, just thinking about my experience with what our crew is, I would say the camaraderie, just mm -hmm. the, the friendships that we have. So obviously when we're at work, we're strictly business. We're here to get things done and, and make things look good and have fun doing it. Yeah. But I feel like we're different than other groups because we joke around a little bit, but outside of work, we go and have dinner together. We go and have yeah. cookouts on the weekends. We watch the boxing matches, you know, whenever there's a big pay-per-view coming up. Nice. And then not only is that the guys within maintenance, but some of the guys that are on the maintenance crew have relatives or close friends that are truck drivers or on the concrete crews. And then 
before you know it, you kind of have this whole blacktop division and yeah. you're kind of doing a blacktop division dinner or cookout <laughs> without even, you know, yeah. planning it to be that. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty tight niche, I would say. That's so cool. And that makes such a difference to your experience of working on the team too, when you get to come to work with your friends and yeah. you want to keep spending time with them. Right. <laughs> you yeah, know? That exactly. Really, that really yeah. says something about that crew. That's really cool. Well, we're coming up towards the end of our time. One last question to just kind of wrap things up as we're looking at this idea of providing more than construction. I think we've hit on it throughout this podcast that maintenance really does offer more than construction to our clients in the form of preservation. I think that's such a cool concept that a lot of people don't associate with the construction industry is this idea of preservation. And I really admire that about what Blacktop does. I admire that about some of the services that SFC does as well, restoring existing bridges and, and that sort of thing. You're really injecting years of life into this thing that's already been constructed, but you're preserving it. You're extending its life. You're extending its usability. You're saving costs and money and time and all of that. And I think that's such a cool concept to be a part of and to offer. What are you guys' thoughts about that idea of preserving these aspects of our community for the sake of our community? Yeah, I mean, it, it would be way easy to just show up to look at a job and a client's, you know, asking what your recommendation would be and just go, oh, mill and overlay. You know, there's there's big money in overlays or new construction. Yeah. It's it's easy for anyone to just show up and take all that you can get from someone. Yeah. But the fact that we're offering all these smaller services and really just being available to do whatever our clients need us to do, not so much what we want to do, but like Matt said, we we give a recommendation, but we're seeing it from both angles. We're seeing yeah. it from budget standpoint and we're also seeing it from, well, what's the right thing to do? Yep. And it may even be giving multiple options like this is what needs to be done, yeah. you know, in my in my expert opinion. But at the same time, I get it. If your budget doesn't allow that this year, let's let's see what we can do to get you another five years and then we'll reassess and go yeah. from there. Yeah. Yeah. I think the whole reason we started maintenance was because of our relationships with other businesses around town. Yeah. We saw the need to upkeep their lots. They didn't have a person that did this for them. Maybe we should start taking care of that for them. So I think just having the relationship with those other people, growing that really led to this growing as well. And that helped with the preservation of their parking lots. So yeah, for sure. And man, <laughs> coming out of a brutal winter for any horizontal surface in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, goodness, there's a need for this right yeah. in our community. And I think that's just so cool to be in a position where we can meet that need to help our community in this way and help so many businesses that we've got relationships with make a better first impression on their clients and care for their clients. Such a unique way of building community that, like I said at the beginning, really flies under the radar. This department that builds community in such a unique way and enables other businesses to also build community and foster this growth and care for each other, I think is really cool. So. We are out of time, but thank you for joining me on the podcast today, for sharing your thoughts on maintenance. We so appreciate what you guys do and we wanna get the word out because we, we want more people to be able to take advantage of our maintenance department. So thanks for being on the show. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks for, for having, having us. us. And thank you listeners for tuning in. Please remember to follow and share this podcast. That helps us and it helps you stay up to date on new episodes that come out. Journey Group's mission, again, is to positively impact lives by building community that comes in so many different forms and we're so excited to be able to share those unique aspects of who we are with you so join us again next time as we continue to explore what it means to do more than construction thanks for listening